children. Welcome to week 25 of Draw and Paint for Life, where we are looking at the artist, Mark, nope, Paul Gauguin. Paul Gauguin, the French artist, he's got a super interesting story, so check it out. He was like a stockbroker and had a family and then he kind of like lost his mind and made amazing art and he was an interesting cat, so check him out. Um, the color orange is so appropriate to look at this week in conjunction with his work because he used it in a way that was really striking. So I hope you enjoy learning about him. French artist followed the Impressionists and um, that period after Impressionism that was so like kind of often overlooked, kind of pulled in with the Impressionists, but incredibly beautiful work. The color orange and we're going to be drawing spiders. Everybody can draw spiders and I just thought it would be fun. So here we go. Let's have a great week and thank you for being here. All right, so this is our color chart for the week. It's on the front page of your workbook, orange. Now this is really fascinating because you'll notice that when you mix orange with black, it goes brown and when you mix it with blue, it goes brown. Um, this is kind of a, a flesh color. This is a really important color to note, especially if you like to do portraits. When you mix it with white, you get into all the flesh tones with orange. Um, this is what it looks like with red, which is such a gorgeous color. So adding orange to red can be a beautiful thing. Yellow, it just kind of makes it more rich, but I find this super fascinating, that deep earth tone made with blue and orange. Just know when you combine, when you combine orange with blue, you're going brown. It's going to be brown. So let's, and why is that? because it's essentially combining all three primary colors. Orange is yellow and red, and then you add blue. Anytime you do that, when you mix your, your three primary colors, you're gonna go brown or black. So you mix a blue, you mix a yellow with a red, you're going brown. And if you mix enough of them, you'll eventually get black, but I like to get my black from a tube. It just seems more, um, it just seems easier, but anyway. So we're gonna look at spiders, and we're gonna start with you know, any type of little thing in the middle of the spider body, maybe make a head and then make a body. And there's so many different ways to make spiders. And spiders are such fascinating animals. They spin those webs and they have like, what a sense of dead reckoning and um, dead reckoning and design. To the next time you go past a spider web, stop and look at it and marvel at the intelligence of such a creature that could create something so beautiful with an internal roadmap. It's like it knew what to do. So, and then we're gonna put some back legs here. I'm gonna erase this one, just cause I feel like these could be a tiny bit wider. That might be cooler. So I'm just kind of articulating the legs. Now what's really fun about drawing animals too is that, you know, you can make up whatever you want for your animal. If you want to put like a star shape on its back, you want to turn it into a cartoon character, you go right ahead, you give it a name, but take that animal and turn it into something that works with your imagination. And I'm just gonna erase this really quickly too because I wanted to show you like, we can also bring elements of design into the animals. There are how many different types of millions of spiders on planet Earth? And maybe one looks like that, and maybe it doesn't. But take the liberty and the freedom of bringing an element of surprise and design into the, um, into the design and coloration of your spider. I'm looking at this, and I think actually this is probably more appropriate. There you go, spider. Thank you for making them this week. Paul Gauguin's life was the stuff of romantic fiction, a tale as exotic and astonishing as his paintings. Born in France, he was raised in Peru. A sailor in his teens, a stockbroker in his 20s, by the age of 35, he was a married father of four and a collector of paintings. 
He bought works from Edouard Manet and the Impressionists Camille Pizarro and Edgar Degas. And then, a plot twist. In 1882, seized by the desire to create rather than collect art, he cast it all away. Rejecting the fetters of bourgeois society, he began a search for artistic purity that would last for the rest of his life. He scoured the most remote areas of France and its colonies for subjects, restlessly scraping away the veneer of civilization to search for deeper truths and redefine the course of painting. And he died in poverty, only to be widely recognized as a genius by later generations. And that's it for week 25. Think about all the things you've learned this year. We learned landscape, we learned geometric form, we learned face, we learned human features. We did the eyes, the mouth, the nose. And then we got into animals and now we're on spiders. Think about your amazing repertoire and what you can do with it. The sky is the limit, there is no limit with art and there's no limit to what you can do with it and what you can create. So thank you for being out there with your massive imaginations and your will and desire to create. Children, you're amazing, and it is an honor to teach you. So thank you for being here, and we'll see you soon. Miss Maureen signing out for the week. <laughs>